If you're into PC gaming, you've probably heard the term overclocking, and for good reason, as it's a relatively simple and straightforward way to get more performance out of your computer for free. Well, sort of. As always, there's definitely a lot more to it than that. But don't worry, that's what this video is for. It's going to show you everything you need to know about overclocking, so what it is, what it does, how to do it, but most importantly, the performance difference it makes to your computer and whether it's worth it in the first place. But first, this video has been kindly sponsored by HP and their brand new Omen Reactor gaming mouse. Not only is it a real luxury bit of kit, but it features lightning fast optical mechanical switches, a 16,000 DPI sensor, and a fully adjustable palm rest, so you'll be racking up your score in both comfort and style. If you're after a lag-free gaming experience and you want to level up your gear with the next generation of switches, hit the link down below and learn a little bit more. So why exactly would you want to overclock your PC in the first place? Well, it's to gain extra performance in any application that really taxes your computer. Everything that runs has a bottleneck, so to speak, and this will cap the speed of execution. This could be the time it takes to open up Photoshop, or maybe it's in games and then it's frames per second. The main thing to remember is that there are loads of different components in your computer, and they're all strained in different situations. So overclocking your processor might help in serious workloads or in games, but it's unlikely to make your computer turn on any faster. The most common component to overclock is the CPU, and that's what we're going to focus on today. I have in hand an Intel i9-9900K PC, which you can learn more about by clicking the i in the top right hand corner, and we're going to overclock it past its stock settings and see exactly what the real world changes are and whether the process was actually worth it in the first place. ASUS sent out their Z390 Maximus 11 Hero, and this is a great example of a motherboard that's been built with overclocking in mind. You of course need a CPU that's unlocked and then ready for overclocking, but also a motherboard that will allow for it. They're typically more expensive, but have better power delivery for a more stable overclock. The process of CPU overclocking is pretty straightforward, it's simple, it's mainstream, but it does carry an element of risk, and ultimately it will probably void your warranty on your CPU, and if you do proceed, do so with caution, because if something goes wrong, you could ultimately irreversibly damage some of your hardware, and unfortunately, I can accept no responsibility if this happens, so proceed with caution and I guess do so at your own risk. The basic fundamentals are as follows. Your processor has cores, and these are used for executing operations. With the more cores, the better. You sadly can't change this number, but you can change the speed that they run at. The quicker the speed, the faster it will be in games and applications. As a processor runs faster, however, it gets thirsty, and requires more power to function properly. Therefore, as we increase the clock speed, we also need to boost up the voltage, or the V-core, to keep everything stable. The theory then is pretty simple. Increase the clock speed and increase the V-core, and everything will be perfect, right? Well, not quite. You see, there's a problem. As we add more power, we're also generating more heat, and heat is bad. If the temperatures hit 100 degrees on the processor, your computer's in trouble, and it's likely going to shut down to prevent damage. And this is exactly why there are so many CPU coolers on the market, as the better, more efficient ones allow you to overclock further as they can displace more heat away from your chip. The one I'm using here has a 240mm radiator and it's water-cooled, so generally speaking, it's up there with some of the better ones. Putting this into practice requires you to hit the restart button and then mash the delete key to hit the motherboard BIOS. I'd highly advise that you take some baseline benchmarks first though, to get an idea of any performance gains. So grab a copy of Cinebench and CoreTemp, both of which are available for free online, run the tests and then note down your figures. You should make sure that the RAM is running at its maximum possible speed. And this is very simple on Intel platforms and is achieved with a single click by enabling XMP. Then if you haven't already, navigate to the overclocking section and you'll find a lot of settings. Don't worry if you don't know what most of them mean, as we can actually leave pretty much all of them on auto, and the motherboard will take care of the rest for us. The first setting you're going to want to change is the core speed, so select this and change it to single cores. You can adjust each one individually, but for now we want every core to max out at the same speed. The Maximus Hero motherboard has already looked at our 9900K, 
and it's given us some suggested overclocking values that we can use to start with. Most motherboards won't do this though, so simply Google the name of your processor and then suffix it with overclocking settings, and this will give you a good idea of places to start. It's definitely not a good idea to jump in with the highest possible values you can find though, as every chip is different, so I've started with a 5GHz overclock. The total speed that the chip will run at is calculated as the base clock times the multiplier, and here the base clock is 100MHz. Therefore, I enter 50 as the core multiplier, and pop in the suggested core voltage of 1.25 volts. But do be very careful when entering these values, as they're very small, and this is the bit that if you get wrong, could potentially cause you some damage, either immediately or over time. So do be sure to actually double check these, as you don't want to enter too much. After saving the settings, it's time to boot back into Windows and open CoreTemp and Cinebench. We're testing to see if the system crashes or if the processor gets too hot. Unfortunately, after mere seconds, we're hit with a blue screen. Uh oh, we've made a mistake. It's therefore time to go back into the BIOS and ever so slightly increase the voltage in a small increment to get things nice and stable. After we've upped the voltage, it's time to go back into Windows and try again. This time Cinebench ran successfully, and the temperatures were way below 100 degrees, so we're all good on that front, and we can actually push our chip a little bit more. So it's time to go back into the BIOS, yes, this process gets very monotonous, and increase the speed to 5.1 GHz. It took quite a few cycles to get this stable, and I ended up maxing out the temperatures at 89 degrees, which is safe, but probably a little too hot for my liking. The perfect balance would have the lowest possible voltage for a completely stable system. My cheat test for stability is to run three successful runs of Cinebench and a five minute resolve render, but if you're using your PC for work, I would seriously advise much longer tests as you don't want a blue screen when you're working on something important. As for performance gains, this can vary wildly, as your chip, overclock and graphics card will dictate the in-game frame rate. My Cinebench score increased by around about 9%, but in the video test it only shaved a couple of seconds off render times, which in practical terms isn't really that useful. As for the gaming numbers, with a 2080 Ti and 3200MHz RAM, frame rates increased across the board, with games as high as 22 frames a second in Far Cry 5. The thing to bear in mind here though is that it's highly dependent on the graphics card you're running at, as well as the resolution as at 4K, you're unlikely to see any big gains, but run a high refresh rate monitor and the difference could be huge. The main takeaway here is that if you are prepared to tweak a bit, you can get more performance out of your processor. But this doesn't actually make it free, as you're going to need a more expensive cooler in the first place, and you'll end up with a louder and more power hungry PC when you finally get there. I guess it's all about balance, as I'll normally overclock my computer, but not normally to the limit. As long as it's fairly quiet, with temperatures that peak under 80 degrees, I'm quite happy. But as overclocking can degrade your chip faster than when it's running at stock, I'm someone that likes to maybe rest on the side of caution. I will leave links to everything that has been featured in this video down in the description below, including the processor, the graphics card, everything, I'll leave it all down there nice and neatly for you. But let me know, are you an overclocker? I think this is actually a really interesting one because it's something I think we're all told to do, but I would wager most of us probably don't. I don't know, interested to hear your thoughts. Let me know down in that comment section. Once again, a massive thank you to HP for sponsoring this video. If you do want to learn a little bit more about these crazy new optical mechanical switches and how they utilize light beam detection for performance up to three times faster than traditional mechanical mouse switches, be sure to hit the link in the description below. But regardless, a massive thank you to you guys for watching and to Asus ROG for sponsoring the channel as always. Please hit that like button if you've enjoyed it, it really helps out, you'd be amazed. And obviously get subscribed for more videos just like this. But thank you once again, I will see you in the next one.